A man stumbled into an old ruined temple. He was wounded and weak. The man lay down under a large pedestal and fell asleep. Like all of the surrounding age structures, it had been devoured by ancient flames. The burned stone was eroded and covered with faint markings from another time. The pillars had fallen and grains of earth filled the intricate crevices on the floor. Long ago, the temple was a site to worship gods that men no longer knew. A giant stone tiger or horse stood tall, towering over anyone who dared to enter the temple. All around, the overgrown jungle had reached up and over the enclosure's walls, making it hardly visible to the outside world. It was always quiet. Occasionally, one could hear a bird in the trees or a creature running across the forest floor. If the man listened with intense focus, he could hear the light rush of water from the nearby river. Other than the trees, water, and stone, he was often alone. Hours later, the man woke up. He was not surprised to find his wounds completely healed. He fell back to sleep almost immediately. Not because he was tired, he had been determined to sleep. He had a mission, a purpose in his sleep. His goal was to create a man through his dreams and then bring that phantom into reality. He was so devoted to his work, he had forgotten life before the temple, before the dreams. The abandoned temple was a perfect place for the man to stay and sleep. No one could see him through the walls of surrounding trees. Nearby workers would leave him rice and fruit, giving him the necessary fuel to continue along his journey of dreaming. When he began his work, the dreams were chaotic, but after some time, they became clear. He would dream of standing in the middle of an amphitheater, one that closely resembled the ruins. Thousands of students sat on tiers of seats that reached up to the sky, except no matter how far each pupil was, he could see their face with exceptional precision. He lectured the class on anatomy, cosmography, and magic. Students would ask and answer various questions, all hoping to prove themselves to their professor, the dreamer. How can we trust that magic is real? What if it's all a simple illusion? Real magic can never be mistaken for our illusion. You must have faith in your capability to find a difference. beauty of the universe. You never know when to stop exploring because you never will. There are infinite possibilities, infinite concepts to learn and study. Just because you reach the sun doesn't mean you should settle for one star. Keep on looking into the vast of space and never stop. Another student questioned the idea that the universe was infinite. Another simple answer. He told the pupil to find the end of the universe. The students were anxious and eager to participate. Each hoped they would prove themselves worthy of being chosen, worthy of being brought out of a dream and into reality. The man soon learned that he could expect little from those who blindly trusted every word that fell out of his mouth. The intelligence, trust, and potential he searched for were seen in the pupils who dared to challenge him. One afternoon, for afternoons were now also given to sleep, he dismissed the class with the exception of one boy. The phantom was young and quiet. His sharp features resembled those of the dreamer. After a few private lessons, the man was pleased with his choice. The boy progressed at an outstanding speed, proving his intelligence and worth. Soon after finding the 
boy, sudden insomnia fell upon the dreamer. He tried tiring himself by exploring the forest, but was only rewarded with short intervals of sleep and useless, fleeting dreams. He made the difficult decision to forget all he had worked for. He had to start over with a new approach. He spent a month regaining his strength before returning to his work. This time, the dreamer began with the phantom's heart. Carefully, he constructed each artery, each vein. When the heart was complete, he began building the brain, then the lungs, the eyes. He called upon the gods. He made the stomach, skeleton, and skin. After years of tedious work, he had produced an entire man through his dreams. When his project was complete, the man dreamed that the statue, which stood tall in the temple, was alive. It formed into a god, a hybrid between tiger, horse, bull, rose, and storm. You, dreamer, were once the god humans worshipped in this very temple. This is how you obtain the ability to dream and create. This boy, Phantom, your son, I will bring him to life, but all creatures, with the exception of you and fire, will believe him to be a real human being. You must teach him all you know, for he will venture to all the surrounding temples, where some voices will glorify, glorify him. This Phantom, his life, is your purpose. Do not disappoint. That night, while the man dreamt, the Phantom woke up. The dreamer dedicated the next two years of his life to teaching his son about the universe, fire, and all their mysteries. Gradually, he introduced the Phantom to reality. Son, tonight you must place a flag on that peak over peak. If I see it when I wake in the morning, I will know you are ready to enter reality. Sure enough, in the morning, the flag was there, waving in the strong winds. The boy was ready. He had been taught all the dreamer deemed necessary. But there was one final step to the boy's creation. He had to believe he was made of true flesh and blood. So the night of his release, the dreamer destroyed all his son's memories of their apprenticeship. The man missed his son. His days were no longer dedicated to dreaming but to thinking about the boy. His life's mission had been fulfilled and the man was happy. His only fear, his son would find out the truth of his creation. Two villagers approached the man years later. Have you heard, they said? There's a charmed man up north who can walk on fire. Knowing this man to be the phantom, the dreamer was content with learning his son was living the life he had dreamed of. Soon after, a sudden fire fell upon the ruins, just as it had centuries before. The man saw the fire as a sign that his time in reality had come to an end. He walked into the fire, welcoming the burning pain, but the pain never came. The flames did not burn his skin. He did not feel the immense heat. With relief and terror, the man realized he was an illusion, a phantom of another man's dreams. <laughs>